Good morning, family, friends, believers, and unbelievers alike. It's Super, Super Sunday. Sunday! We're blessed again by the Lord to deliver this message on today, for Sunday, the week of July 11th, 2021. And today's lesson is... Hezekiah rallies Judah's army. And it's coming from Lesson Text, 2 Chronicles, verses one, th chapter 32, verses 1 through 8. And verses 22 and 23. Amen. Wife, would you like to lead us in prayer? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this, this beautiful Sunday that you've given us. I pray, Lord, that you will watch over us and keep us. Open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to receive and comprehend the word that is coming forth today. Pray that you will open hearts, change hearts, change minds. I pray, Lord, whoever this message is for, that it will reach them wherever they are. In your mighty son's name, I pray, Holy Spirit, sit among us and with us and dwell with us. Speak through us, Holy Spirit, as we speak your word. Amen. Amen. This week, I have the first portion of the lesson. I'm just going to dive on in. I'm going to read the scriptures. And then I'm going to read my portion of the scriptures just for context. So, yes. here we go. Uh, we're reading from the New Living Translation. So, everybody have different versions. And it reads as follows. After Hezekiah had faithfully carried out his work, King Sennacherib of Assyria <clears throat> invaded Judah. He laid siege to the fortified towns, um, giving orders for his army to break through their walls. But Hezekiah realized that Sennacherib also intended to attack Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and military advisors, and they decided to stop the flow of spring of the excuse me of the springs outside the city. They organized a huge work crew to stop the flowing of the springs, cutting off the brooks that ran through the fields. For they said, Why should the king of Assyria come here and find plenty of water? Then Hezekiah worked hard at repairing all the broken sections of the wall, erecting towers and constructing a second wall outside the first. He also enforced, uh, excuse me, the supporting terrace in the city of David and manufactured large numbers of weapons and shields. He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate. And Hezekiah encouraged them to encourage them by saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria or his or his mighty army, for there is excuse me, for there is a power far greater on our side. He <clears throat> may have a great army, but they are merely men. We have the Lord our God to help us to fight our battles for us. Hezekiah's words greatly encouraged the people. That's 1 through 8, uh, 22, 23. That is how the Lord rescued Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from King Sennacherib of Assyria and from all the others who threatened them. So they were... So, excuse me. so there was peace throughout the land. From then on, King Hezekiah became highly respected among all the surrounding nations, and many gifts for the Lord arrived at Jerusalem with the valuable, with valuable presents. Excuse me, valuable, valuable presents for King Hezekiah to. Cover and break the chapters up. Um, I mean, break, excuse me, not chapter, break the verses up. I have verses one through five, so I'm gonna do, I just lost the, the page in the Bible. So I'm gonna cover one and two, and then three and four. Just bear with me. 
So I'm going to read one and two. One and two <clears throat> reads, After Hezekiah had faithfully carried out his work, King Sennacherib of Assyria invaded Ju Judah. He laid siege to the fortified towns, um, giving orders for his army to break through the walls. When Hezekiah realized that Sirach, excuse me, Sennacherib also invade, he also intended to invade and to attack Jerusalem. In today's lesson, we are reminded of Jesus' words in John 16, 33b. And I'm going to read that uh, verse. It reads, it's the B portion. It reads, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. So in this situation, um, the invading arm, the Assyrian army is invading the southern kingdom of, uh, of Israel and King Hezekiah is now the reigning king on the throne. Now, <clears throat> why I started that, why I started to remind you what Jesus said, that we have trials and tribulations in this world. This, it doesn't matter how much we're you know, serving God the right way, pleasing in the sight, we're in this world, we're still going to have trials and tribulations. Here we see a faithful king who has served the Lord well. King Hezekiah trusted and obeyed God and served, served to undo all the evil his father, King Ahaz, did while he reigned in Jerusalem. Hezekiah destroyed idol worship altars to false gods and reinstated reinstated the Passover celebration and tithing and reopened the temple that his father had closed. In spite of all we do to, to be pleasing in the sight of, in the Lord's sight, struggles are inevitable in this life. But Jesus does not abandon us to our struggles. In fact, we must remember that, that the cross was the ultimate victory won. So in our most troublesome times, we can't claim the peace of Christ. So... <clears throat> In this trial, in this life, we have trials and tribulation. Jesus spoke those words in uh, John to his disciples. So, in this lesson, it's just reminding us that it doesn't matter how, you know, how much we serve God, and not saying in a bad way, but how much we serve God, how much we trust Him, how much we're, you know, we're committed. We're in this life, we'll still have trials and tribulations because there's a fallen world. So there's nothing perfect here in this world. So we're going to come against um, um, things that test our faith, things that is going to go wrong. And everyone has their own Assyria, uh, uh, Assyria that's going to invade their uh, life. Um, your Assyria could be, it could be your serving God, your... Uh, uh, preaching and speaking the word to um, other others, inviting them to Christ, and and say, for instance, your child could be born uh, premature, stuck in um, an incubator for months, for months, and you might be saying, "Oh uh, God, I'm serving you. Uh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. That I'm praying to you every day. How could this happen?" And like I go back to a scripture, Jesus says, "In this in this um, life, we will have trials and tribulations, we will have troubles, we will have suffering, 
we have struggles. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying, I'm just giving this as the Holy Spirit gave to me, as practical, practice as I can for our modern, uh, modern, modern time. This, we're serving God, and the next thing you know, uh, we're getting full clothes on our house, or we're serving God, and then a loved one, uh, your, your husband or your wife, pass away from cancer, and you're saying, God, how can this be? I'm serving you. Uh, I'm living for you, God. But we have to you know, trust the words of God. We have to trust what Jesus said that in this, in this life we'll have trials and tribulations. But it doesn't mean that God, in your trials and tribulations, God's going to abandon you. He's going to be with you. And like you see, he's here with Hezekiah and the people of Israel, I many people of, Ju of Judah. He's with them. Although the Assyrian army is so large, it's not that it's just the Assyrian army, it's the whole um, the Assyrian Empire is at their front gate, ready to knock it, ready to knock it down and come in and take all they have. But Hezekiah is a God fearing king. He trusts God to do what God says he's gonna do, keep and protect them. Although although um you know, in human perspective, in my mind, I'm thinking Isaiah and his, I mean, Hezekiah in his quiet time, it's like, God, I just uh, restored the land back to you, you know? I just, um, the people back a good relationship with you because, you know, I, I, I destroy all these idols, um, destroy all these altars on these hills and people praying to some false gods. You couldn't give me like, you know, a couple of years of peace, he just, just after we did a whole reform, uh, spiritual reform, he just threw these Assyrians out in front of my gate. That's just, you know, you respect it. It's just me thinking what uh, has guy, uh, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> but all seriousness, on this life, we'll have trials and tribulations, but the Lord will never. He said in the word, and he promised us, he never will abandon us or forsake us. He will always, always come through. Um, <clears throat> moving on through the lesson. My, uh, second section of cover, um, chapters, I mean, excuse me, chapters, verses 3 through 5. And 3 to 5 reads as follows. Number three, he consulted with his officials and military advisors, and they um, decided to stop the flow of spring up the, the springs outside the city. They organized a huge working crew to stop the flow of the springs, cutting off the brook that ran through the fields. For they say, said, why should the king of Assyria come here and find plenty of water? The Hezekiah worked, worked hard at preparing, at, excuse me, at repairing all the broken sections of the wall, erecting towers and constructing, sec, constructing a second wall outside the first. He also reinforced the supporting terrace, terrace in the city of David and manufactured large number of weapons and shields. Uh, preparation. That, was, that is a king, that is a godly leader that prepared. So I'm going to start this uh, portion with a definition. Preparation. The action or process of making ready or being made ready for use or consideration. My second definition, something done to get ready for an event or undertaking. So this undertaking is the attack of the Syrian nation, the Assyrian nation. It shows you how <clears throat> when you truly follow God, when you're a true leader, a truly godly leader, 
how God gives you what you need to do. God gave Hezekiah the, the idea. God, God gives every, God is the creator of the universe. He gave um, Hezekiah the idea of, you know what, just cut off the water from outside. So when they get there, they have no water for their men. So they were sitting in the desert, thirsty. So you know when you get thirsty, exactly. Like it's been said that water is uh, water gives life. So if you cut off the water, you cut off the life of whoever is attacking you, right? So there is a right there's a right way and a wrong way to do any task. King Hezekiah chose the right way. As a good and godly leader, Hezekiah knew he had to make provisions for the people and strengthen the wall of the city to withstand any attack. He prepared a plan, but most important, trusted God to see it through. That's a godly leader. That's someone that Trust God enough to know, trust God enough and believe that God's going to do what he's going to do. All Hezekiah had to do here is do his part. He went to God. He encouraged his people. He encouraged his people not to be afraid that God got this. He dug a tunnel, okay? He dug a tunnel from the spring to Jerusalem on the ground. That's a smart man. Actually, that's a godly man. That's a godly leader. <clears throat> so his people had provisions, okay? They had they had water flow flowing inside the city, but he cut off all the water that flew outside the city to the fields. So there's no drinking water for the Assyrians that surrounded surrounded them. But his people had provisions. Because he trusted God, like I said, he trusted God to do what God said God was going to do. God put God put him in this position for such for such a time. God always God puts us in places that we need to be in. It's kind of need to be king right at this at this point in time because God knew he had the Assyrian the Assyrians coming to attack. So you, God put him, put Hezekiah in place to provide and protect his people. And as you trust God and move um, accordingly uh, to God's will, that could, God will always put you in the right position to be successful. Um, I could close the section with I like a contrast between these two kings. Okay? So, in other accounts, in other, other accounts, um, Second uh, Kings 18, uh, 19, and um, Isaiah uh, 30, 36, 37, it gives more, the more description of the back and forth between King uh, Sennacherib and uh, King uh, Hezekiah. So King Sennacherib sent a, you know, like a threatening letter, threatening uh, message to King Hezekiah. So his chief of staff came and told Hezekiah, boasting like, oh, we conquered all these nations. What make think your God is stronger enough to save, um, save, save your nation? So in Psalm first in Psalm one, um, it tells us uh, that we shouldn't um, like stand with mockers or wicked or the wicked. And it I'm just paraphrasing there. Okay. And it tells of um, um, those who those who trust in the Lord are like. And who believe in God are like trees on the banks and the river banks, right? So they're they're so close to the water, and the water is giving the tree life. The trees you're gonna be a fruit, your leaves gonna stay green. 
And the, the two contracts between these two kings, Sennacherib trusted in his own power, his own military might. But Hezekiah, on, 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 in contrast, Hezekiah trusted in God. So King Sennacherib is like, he's like, they treat us not by the water. He's a tree that's like, say, planted in the desert. There's no source of nourishment for that tree. You can't pull for anything. It's just dry and desolate. Dry and desolate. He's trying to, the tree's trying to survive on its own strength. But King, is like, King Hezekiah is like, that tree, that tree that's planted, planted by the banks of the river is pulling nourishment, getting water, is staying, staying refreshed. It's growing that fruit, fruit. It, and it's growing um, that that fruit. So in contrast, if you trust in God, see, Kings and uh, Kings and Akrib had no where to pull his strength from. He just didn't trust in him. But King Hezekiah knew where his strength lies. Strength lied in God. So he's, that's his sources of power. So that's why he told his people to be to stay. And be encouraged and stand in the face of this evil king. That's what the Holy Spirit had for me to give to you. And that's for my section and why I take it over. Hello. I'm going to read over my verses um, for context. Um, I'm going to start verse 7. No, verse 6 through 8. And it reads, he appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate. Then Hezekiah encouraged him by saying, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and his mighty army for their power is far greater on our side. For, I'm sorry, for there is a power far greater on our side. He may have a great army, but they are merely men. We have the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles for us. Hezekiah's, Hezekiah's words greatly encouraged the people. I'm going to read 22 and 23. This is how the Lord rescued Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from King Sennacherib in Assyria and from all the others who threatened them. So there was a peace throughout the land. From then on, King Hezekiah became highly respected among all surrounding nations, and many gifts for the Lord arrived at Jerusalem with valuable presents for King Hezekiah too. Living a life of faithfulness to the Lord is no guarantee that hard times will not come. Amen. Christians should expect to have trials and tribulations in this life. Courage based on true hope is more crucial than all the weapons and defensive arrangements combined. He instilled courage into them. Hezekiah could see with eyes of faith. Mm -hmm. He did not waver in his trust in the Lord. So I'm going to define faith. And I'm going to give two definitions. One is the, the um, dictionary and one is biblical. Faith, by definition, is complete trust or confidence in something or someone, or um, they also had strong belief in God. This is the dictionary um, from online. Now, this is from the Bible. I'm sorry, this is another um, definition from um, online, and then I'll go to, the, to Hebrews 11 and 1. Um, faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance that the Lord is working even though we cannot see it. Okay. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hezekiah did two things when the Assyrians came to fight. He strengthened the, city defen the city's defenses and he prayed. Mm. Now I'm going to break faith down in two points. Faith is believing in God's character, who he is, who he says he is. And two, 
Faith is believing in God's promises. He will do what he says. Mm -hmm. Often in times of distress, the first thing to be abandoned is faith. However, faith does not just disappear, leaving nothing behind. When faith leaves, fear appears and replaces it. Fear is what fuels panic. Panic clouds judgment and prevents us from making rational decisions. Hezekiah had nothing to fear because he had because he had greater resources to draw from than the Assyrians. Hmm. Satan wants to cause us to fear our our circumstances right. more than we trust in God. Fear prevents us from accomplishing God's commands. Right. When the king and his city, and I'm speaking of Hezekiah. When King Hezekiah and his city were faced with the greatest threat, he did not rally his people around himself. He rallied them to trust in the only one who could save them. Amen. From a human's perspective, the battle was a sure victory for the Assyrians. Right. Based on great military, great military strength, numbers, and past victories. But Hezekiah knew his God was mighty and more powerful. Judah had the strong arm of the Lord to defend them. Right. Your greatest weapon when faced with hard times, battles, is prayer. Prayer is a weapon, the greatest weapon Hezekiah could have ever used. Hmm. Because Hezekiah turned to the Lord, turned to the Lord, God heard him and spared Jerusalem from ruin. God not only protects his people, he provides for them. Amen. In um, the previous verses, verses four through five, we see Hezekiah preparing for battle. He was preparing for he was preparing for what he was asking God to do. Right. While Hezekiah and his people took wise measures, ultimately all the protection and provision they needed were found in the Lord. He fought the battle for them entirely on his own, requiring no assistance. From them whatsoever. Hezekiah made preparations and his people were ready should God have chosen to fight through them. The defense preparations and gathering of weapons were not really needed, hmm. but by preparing to fight, it demonstrated that they were not good. That, but I'm sorry, excuse me. But by preparing to fight, it demonstrated that they were not giving up. And this portion spoke a lot to, um, I mean, stood out to me a lot when with prayer that we, I don't know if we, I can't say everyone, but we do kind of take prayer lightly. And prayer is literally the, the surest thing that you can use or mostly the only thing really that you can use for God to hear you Amen. because it's prayer is communicating with God. Yeah. Prayer is talking to your father. Right. Um, not praying a special thing or saying a special thing, but honestly just pouring your heart out to God and, and asking him for help. If that's what the prayers um, in regards of Hezekiah, um, as I read in the, in the Bible, they said he he did everything from his whole heart. Not he held nothing back. So um, as Lorraine spoke about before, how originally they were under the the leadership of his father, and his father had them doing and serving and believing in everything but God. And Hezekiah literally turned everything around once his father died. He had no one to con he had no one to prevent the changes that he was putting into place mm -hmm. and everything he did, he did sure footed. He did, um, with his whole heart. Um, but in this instance, in particular with this battle, he prayed him and Isaiah's, it speaks to Isaiah. Um, I didn't speak on it and Lorraine didn't really speak on it much, but when Hezekiah encouraged his people, he gave the best speech a leader could give. Yeah. And I want to reference it to, 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 to today's, um, to make it relevant for today. 
And I don't like to give Satan so much credit, but this is how the enemy works. You can just finish reading the word of God and God can speak to you and, and or someone he used as a vessel to speak to you, something encouraging. Mm -hmm. And literally within five, 2.5 seconds, something can happen to you and the enemy just speaks so much negative into you to where now you're like, oh, well... You start to second guess what you you know is right, right or what you just heard. And this happened to Hezekiah and his people. He just gave a great speech and somehow, some way, the king of Assyria found out about it and sent messengers right. to basically tear down every word he just spoke. Right. And it was a psychological, it was a psychological attack. So not only do we, I'm sorry, excuse me, my allergies are acting up, guys. But um, not only did he, did the Assyrians try to attack them physically, they started mentally. And in any battle and in any war, the first attack is always mental. Because if you get to the mental, you can win a battle. Because mentally, if you destroy someone or break someone down... They're not thinking straight right. or fear starts to come in right. or they feel unable or uncapable. Their confidence goes down and now they're they're so vulnerable right. to where you don't even have to do much. You can just win. And this was a tactic that the king of Assyria used. Yeah. He used psychological um, attacks first. However... Because of Hezekiah's faith in God and his trust in God, he still spoke against it. He still made sure that his people knew, no, do not listen to that. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm saying to you. Trust and believe in what I'm saying. God will bring us out of this. He will. He will um, bring us through. He will win this battle. But they didn't know that God was going to actually do it on his own. They prepared and like when I was reading this, they prepared in every way possible. Right. And nothing that they prepared was used. Right. I don't even think they were awake. Because when you read when you're reading it, it says that because um Sennacherib taunted God, mm -hmm. he taunted um Judah so much, mm -hmm. he kind of put himself in harm's way. Right. Like God ultimately probably would have fought through them and they would have won the battle by God giving them the strength and power to do it. Right. But because it's like he was annoying and right. because he just kept pushing and kept pushing and kept talking mess, God was like, okay. You talk about all these other gods that are not gods. I'm going to show you who I am. Right. And he sent the Lord's army and destroyed. Um, as you read further... In Second Chronicles, um, and then I believe it's in Kings as well. It's another segment where they talk about the number, and it was 185,000 soldiers that they wiped out. Got, That's a big number. That guy wiped out. That God's army destroyed in the night. It wasn't like it was done like where they the the um, where Judah could see it happening. It was done. They were sleeping. Um, so it's just, I'm just saying, I said all that to say, we don't know what God is doing in the background while we're preparing what we're asking God for. Amen. We just have to stay faithful in our preparation right. because we don't know what God is going to do. Amen. If Hezekiah could stand up to such a threat with courage and faith in the Lord's protection, can we not trust him to fight for us in the things we face? If you are going through a situation that is overwhelming, remember God will be with you as you trust in him. We can also experience victory in our battles through faith in Christ. When you pray, have unwavering faith and place your hope and trust in God. You will see the proof of what God can do. Like Hezekiah and his people, pray and prepare for what you're asking God for. Mm. Two things can happen if, um, two things can happen. God can use you as a vessel 
right. and give you power and strength to, to combat whatever it is you're facing right. and overcome it. Or he can fight for you entirely and you do nothing. You don't even have to lift a finger. But you must have faith in God alone. Amen. And that is um, that is the end of my segment of the lesson. And I just want to remind you all that no matter what you're facing, like um, Orain mentioned earlier, in this life we will have trials and troubles. But the key point that we all know is that Jesus says to take heart because he has overcome the world. Amen. And... No matter what battle we face, yes, it is going to break us down. Yes, yes it is going to probably allow fear to creep in because yeah. we are human. Yeah, but that's when prayer comes in. Yep. Um, I'm just going to give a little tangent and then this is it just to make it relatable. We've mentioned or I've mentioned before about our um, desire for children and our, our somewhat of a struggle, our, our infertility um, story. Mm -hmm. And one thing that always stood, that stood out to me was um, preparation. And we pray, we pray, we pray for a child. And before we weren't preparing for the child like mm -hmm. we should. And so now we're actually preparing, not um, just praying, but we're preparing physically, we're preparing mentally, and um, we're preparing for what we're asking God for. Amen. And that's just a segment of, and someone else may be going through that, I don't know. God just told, the Holy Spirit told me to share that. We, um, we have two bedrooms, and we prepared purposely our second bedroom, and we call it the baby's room. Amen. And we don't, we haven't put like everything in there, but we're preparing for what we're asking God for. Yes. And to some people, you, and then too, you can't always tell people what you're doing because your preparation, they may not understand. Right. So whatever you're facing in your battles, God will guide you and lead you to people who will understand your preparation. They may even assist you in your preparation. Right. But ultimately, the only thing he's looking for is that your part yep. there's two components to 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 faith your part and god's part yep. when you pray that's you trusting god with what you're asking him for but god also wants to see what you're gonna do right. because he wants to see because again faith is believing something you can't see right it's hoping for something you are sure you're, you're sure it's, your, your confidence is there but you don't even see it it's not in front of you right so you're preparing for something you don't even know what's coming and what you may have think in your mind is going to happen like it says God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts his ways are higher than our ways so you can't even imagine what he is probably going to do to where you be baffled like God I didn't even have to do nothing right. but then he's like but you did you trusted me by showing action faith is action yep. So I just wanted to leave you guys with that. Um, remember that faith is action and prayer is a weapon yep. and worship is a weapon. Amen. So when you're going through trials and tribulations, remember to take heart. Remember to pray, wait, and trust in the Lord. Amen. Peace. Peace.